Hello friends, welcome back to our little coffee club. Today we're gonna be taking a look at one of the Good Brother coffees I showed you last time. Uh, we're gonna try this one. Next time maybe we'll pull shots of espresso with the Congo Kivu. Uh, maybe we'll even compare between the, the Bianca and the Infuser again. Maybe I'll bring both machines out and, and we'll pull some shots of that. But today I wanna really try this one. Let me, well, I don't want to take the chance of maybe seeing the tasting notes. I don't remember them at all, and I want to guess at them. So I'm not going to read into it. So you guys could see it there. You guys could see it there. Um, we're going to make a pour over, and then we'll talk about it, okay? See, I can't see the tasting notes without my glasses unless I really squint and really try really hard. So <laughs> there's no danger of me seeing the, the tasting notes, but... All right, so let's go to the other counter and do a pour over. And then we're gonna talk, I have this one out too. I wanna report back as to this coffee. Uh, some really interesting things have happened, but we'll talk about that in a second. Let me, let's make some coffee first, let's see if I can get going here. And then, uh, we'll, then we'll talk about it. Uh, I can't wait to try this one. So let's get it over to the other counter. So I started this morning with a deep cleaning of my niche zero. <laughs> and I have to say, guys, if you get a coffee like that black and white coffee, all right, if you get a coffee like this one, and it, by the way, the cold fermented, I looked into it and it, exactly what I thought it was is what it is. Cold fermented means it was fermented with something else so that cherries, the coffee cherries were um, mixed with, uh, in this case, I guess, lychee, and they put them in fermentation tanks and they let everything ferment together. Now, <laughs> I don't know if all the different mixes or combinations of things will add this kind of, uh, you know, probably not. Like, let's, let's say they put cinnamon sticks. It's not going to be anything like uh, adding lychees to the coffee beans is gonna that's gonna create its own profile its own thing so but uh, you know in the case of um, of this coffee it <laughs> the level of funkiness in the coffee is just tremendous especially the smell in the bag beef and when you grind it okay now once you brew it the smell completely changes it mellows out and it just smells fruity like a fruit punch or something something very fruity and sweet and the taste uh, of the coffee is, you know, just like what I described when I first reviewed it. Um, you know, I, we'll talk a little bit more about this one <laughs> as we get going. But I did want to mention that if you get something like this, you're going to have to clean up your equipment after you're done with this coffee. So for now, the rest of this, I'm going to enjoy as pour overs and I'm going to grind it with the K plus and then I'll clean my K plus once I'm done with this coffee. But for now, Everything that I grind that is not this, it's gonna be on the niche. That's why I cleaned it out today so I could taste this coffee. I did a deep cleaning, cleaned out the niche, left it spotless, and so that I could review this coffee and taste it and get the funkiness out of it. So the little grease that I bought that I said was for the niche, uh, you know, you, you're supposed to add a little bit to the thread here when you're gonna go lock it, lock this piece back in. Okay, so when you put this back in, just add a little bit of grease to the to the threads to kind of keep it nice and nice and greased. That's the, that's what Niche recommends, and that's the reason why I have bought that little bit of grease is to put on there. So yeah, the Niche is clean now and it'll grind everything except this. This will be on the <laughs> on the K plus until I'm done with this bag. Then I'll clean out the K plus. So keep in mind, if you get a cold fermented coffee. Uh, chances are that once you're done with that bag, you might have to clean your equipment. So I <laughs> just wanted to mention that. 
we'll talk we'll talk more about that the you know that coffee later after after we finish with uh you know making our pour over and tasting this and guessing at the tasting notes and all that good stuff so let's get the bag open again these uh good brother bags are just spectacular <laughs> okay that didn't, that didn't want to come off all right Okay, so the first thing we gotta do, like always, is check the roast level. So let's open this and... Again, these always have a Ziploc and seal and you can keep your coffee in here. As long as you're gonna keep it and drink it within a month, month and a half, you don't even need to take it out of these bags. These bags are perfectly well suited for keeping your coffee fresh for a month or even more. Okay. So I cracked the bag open right away. I'm getting the aroma. I have to say it has a really nice aroma. You know, still the ARP is still the champ of the aroma, that first ARP coffee I ever received. I mean, <laughs> it blew me away. But yeah, this, this smells really good. You know, <laughs> well, well, I keep wanting to tell you guys about this black and white experience because it was a full experience which I'm still in the middle of, by the way, I'm still have plenty of that coffee left, but, um, but yeah, I, 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 <laughs> I keep going back to that. I wanna keep telling you guys about that. All right, let's take a look at the roast level. Oh yeah, this is a uh, medium to light. It's a uh, pretty light roast. Let me show you guys. Okay, now with all the lights on, you can probably see it there. I'm gonna take a picture. Usually on the picture, it looks better. Let me show you guys. All right, so yeah, we're dealing with a medium to light. Let's uh, dose out our 20, let's dose out our 20 grams for the pour over. Let me make sure everything's focused. Okay, yeah, we should be good there. We should be good there, okay. Tear the scale and weigh out our 20 grams. little bit over oh wow <laughs> okay exactly 20 grams oh you know what we're gonna have retention for sure I'm just gonna go ahead and add an extra I think this will put me right in the ballpark if I go with uh, another 0.5 no that's too much take out one bean <laughs> I want to see I want to see okay 0.6 I'm gonna leave it there we're gonna grind 20.6 it's gonna be interesting to see what we get out of the niche today. Um, okay, so for pour overs, you know, we don't usually do pour overs on the niche, but let's, uh, let's, let me take you guys over there. Okay, so here's my niche, spotless. And okay, so a, a setting for pour overs to get started with, is usually like all the way to the end, <laughs> to the end. I like to start somewhere around 50, but uh, you know, sometimes I go even, you know, pass. You go like to over there to where it says calibrate here on the, on the back. You gotta go all the way to that to get it coarse enough. But you know, usually I like to start there all the way at the end at 50. So we're gonna we're gonna grind there and see what we get. Uh, I'm gonna use the the steadfast. I'm still hooked on that brewer. I really like it. I really enjoy using it. And you know, I'm going to shoot for like a four minute to maybe four and a half minute with this light of a roast. You know, and I have the water temperature set at 97, as you can see there. Okay, so we're gonna grind all the way up, <laughs> all the way at 50. The water temperature's at 97. And we have 20, well now it's at 20.5. It was reading 20.6, but I guess it's between 20.6, 20.5. Let's see what we get out of the niche. Okay, that's our 20 grams. Oh, so this is the first video I'm recording other than the little, you guys by now you've seen it weeks ago, okay? But I put a Friday video where I showed, I, I was making Turkish coffee, okay? So I gave you a little recipe for making a, just a, enough for one person, you know, a single serving of Turkish coffee. And um, so yeah, it was one of those little cinematic videos, short clips, and I showed how to install this and you know, well, not really how to install it. There's nothing to it. You just push it in the 
but the very first time I installed it and I filmed that clip doing Turkish coffee. But this is the first video, like full video, like regular video that I'm filming with this thing installed. And you know, now I don't need to use, you can easily use still the niche uh, catch cup, but you know, this one, the, the Posado one, this is the Posado. <laughs> <laughs> this is my Passado cup. Okay, there you see it. Yeah, there you go. There you see it. Okay, so this is my Passado one. It came with my little set of tools from Passado. And this one now fits perfect and there's no, no mess. I, I hadn't used it because, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> when you grind with this short of a cup and it's coming from the spout, it kind of like, you know, you get a little mess. You get a little mess and I like keeping it tidy. You guys know that. Okay, so there you see the rose level again. Okay, so we'll, we'll use the Posado cup today, why not? First time using it here on the channel other than that little cinematic video. Let's put this one back here. All right, here we go. So we're at 50, 20 grams. Oh, let me tap my scale, make sure it doesn't time out on me. Okay, here we go. you know <laughs> man this coffee <laughs> oh I was so wrong you know I'm gonna leave this in the video so you guys could see I'm gonna leave it in the video <laughs> this didn't happen <laughs> oh my gosh okay let's first let's see what we get what we <laughs> this coffee made a mess you know I <laughs> <laughs> this worked perfectly fine the other day when I did the Turkish coffee. Perfectly fine. There was no mess, no little flakes anywhere. But look at this. Look at today when Basirk. You know, it has to. <laughs> it has to do with this coffee in particular. I don't know what it is, but okay, wait a minute. What in the world? Oh, I switched the. <laughs> oh my God! This has been a mess today. I am off to like a horrible start. Like, what should I do here? Okay. <laughs> okay, we could still weigh it. When I put it in the step fast, we'll weigh it. But obviously, I dosed into the niche cup like I always do. I ground into this one and it, we don't know what we have. So, <laughs> man, what a mess. What? <laughs> I'm panicking over here. All right, let me clean this whole mess up. I don't, <laughs> I'm trying to showcase my little spout. I was so proud of it and happy. And this coffee, you know, I, wow, you know, I have never felt before. And you guys are getting my honest reaction here. I'm just gonna keep filming and give you my honest reaction. I have never, you know, maybe it's because it's winter time and it's kind of, it's kind of like a chilly kind of wet. <laughs> All right, Boytek, you're in Canada, okay? But here, chilly means we're below 60, okay? And we're not even below 60 today. Uh, it's 60 something, okay? so. <laughs> for us, that's cold and it's dry. It's not like 90% humidity. For us, if it dips below 90, man, that's it. We are drying up. We got to use moisturizer. So <laughs> this is maybe what happens. This is why, why people use the, you know, the little spray of water. <laughs> My, I've never seen this happen, okay? With any coffee ever with the spout, no spout, didn't matter. This never happened like this. So, <laughs> okay, my honest reaction. Let's just move on with the process. Let's see what happens. Uh, <laughs> all right, whatever, let's keep going. All right, so before we keep going, I'm going to uh, wipe off this little mess here. I can't, I can't, uh, and I can't keep recording looking at this, uh, this little mess. I gotta enjoy my process. And the visual aspect of the whole process, you see, you know, it's important. It's important to me. That's why we like coffee equipment, right? We enjoy it. We like looking at all these pretty tools and stuff. So cleanliness has to, has to happen. Okay, I don't know if this clip, I'm gonna leave all of this in. <laughs> I'm just uh, recording everything. And who, who knows, maybe you get a little bonus at the end or maybe I left everything in. You gotta always watch to the end because every now and then we throw in. And you know what, my niche was spotless, man. I had, <laughs> oh no, no, Posado. <laughs> oh my God, what a mess. 
<laughs> what happened? What happened? What's up with this coffee? Why is it so messy? <laughs> oh my God. You know, this is out of control. I just got to leave it like, there's still some little bit of flakes, but it, it, you know, the show must go on. I, I got to have my coffee. <laughs> you know, nothing like this has ever happened. This is the, and what are we up to like, you know, I've recorded over a hundred coffee videos now, guys, over a hundred. Uh, and you know, our community has grown. Our few little friends here on our coffee club, uh, you know, some people have decided to join us. You know, is it is it fun to watch me like um, kind of fix up everything? I don't, <laughs> I don't think so. I'm going to have to cut out some of this because if not, you guys are just going to, I don't know, you're going <laughs> to don't unsubscribe, guys, please don't don't do that to me. <laughs> we're, we're almost getting there. OK, so. All right, let's let's <laughs> I'm all I'm all mixed up now. Okay, I'm gonna turn this around so you guys could see it good. Let's uh let's see. You said there okay. Yeah, yeah, this is this will work. This will work. Okay, first we have to man, I have a feeling. I have a feeling I'm gonna end up making some kind of you know, I have a feeling I'm gonna end up making some kind of mistake here because I'm like all over the place. This is really threw me off this mess with <laughs> what happened. I have no, no idea. <laughs> oh my god. All right, let me get let me let me try to let me try to make it past this. Uh... Okay, center the scale there. We gotta rinse everything. Oh man, I have a feeling I'm gonna mess something up here. <laughs> it's just too much. It's too much for me. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure if you guys could see me folding the filter from that angle. I don't think so. Sorry guys. But you know, I have shown how to fold the filter for the step fast already like a million times, so. We're gonna move on past that today. Okay, bam, there we go. Let me see, how does that look? Yeah, no, I'm gonna have to change the angle a little bit. Hold on. All right, I repositioned the camera. <clears throat> I forgot, this is the angle I always need for pull overs. But I repositioned the camera there, should work for you guys. Let's do a rinse. I'm still laughing about it. Oh boy. <laughs> Gosh. I got this little fold on the filter here. I don't know why that happened. I'm gonna have to roll with that, but I don't like how that looks either. <laughs> What's going on today? Okay, that's gonna have to, that's gonna have to, <laughs> gonna have to do. Okay, this part I'm not messing up. I am getting the, the water out of here and into the cup. Actually, that only happened once. I, I mean, so far. <laughs> Give me time. Give me time. I will make it happen again. Okay, so now we put the glass off to the side there. Okay, it looks the, the camera is still telling me the focus is locked on the right thing, so. Okay, so we're ready. Now we're gonna weigh the coffee, see what the retention was like. But remember, we had between 20.5 and 20.6. Um, I imagine it's gonna be probably 20, which is what I always brew. 20 in, 300 out, a one to 15. So I'm fluffing it up. I don't know if I, <laughs> I was kind of far away, but I'm fluffing it up before I put it into, just use the, you know, the thing, the, <laughs> use the regular thick needles for that. And here we go. Come on, Pasado. Uh, it's 19.9. .9. So we lost like a 0.6, maybe even 0.7. Now, 
in my experience, when you do a deep cleaning like this, this is normal. And then the next one will be like half of that. The next one will like half of that again. And then after that, you're basically back to 0 0.1, 0 0.2 off, plus or minus, and that's where you stay. Okay, so now, okay, so now we give it a little shake here and flatten it out. You guys have seen me do this process a million times. Now, I, I told you guys already previously in another video that the only change I've made as far as uh, using the step fast is that instead of my very first pour, instead of doing 50 grams uh, circle and then the next pour 50 gram center, I do the circle and center all at once so that I can saturate all the coffee at the same time. Because if you only do the 50 grams with most, most coffees, it's, you're not gonna end up saturating everything. So uh, that's what I've been doing. After that, I do the 50 gram pours you know, circle center until I have my 300 grams. So let's start the time. I'm, again, I'm shooting for hopefully at least like four minutes, but uh, I would like more like four and a half minutes with this kind of coffee, let's see. And again, with the steadfast, you can still grind a big course and still get kind of like a slow drawdown. And by doing that, I find it that, you know, it just gives you a sweeter cup. Or you have, I mean, if you use a similar brewer, like a V60, you might have to grind a lot finer to get it to brew that long. And you could still kind of achieve the same taste, you know? We, we still haven't talked about all my brewers and my, my theories on using this type of brewers. And why do I think that you can probably get them to taste pretty much the same by adjusting the different, you know, the different, uh, the different parameters or that's not the word I want to use. I'll put it here on the screen when I think of it. <laughs> you know, sometimes you're recording and it's just a, like a word. You just say either the wrong word or not the word you meant to use or you just can't think of the right word. <laughs> that happens all the time. When we go live, I imagine that's gonna happen more. Okay, so now here, like at one and a half minutes, I do a center pour. We go to about 200. We have two more pours, one circle, one center. You know what, I'm gonna give it a, a swirl because this is going way too fast for my Come on, slow down. Maybe 50 on the niche was a, a bit too too much. We'll see. We'll see. Look at how much it slowed down. That's incredible. <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, there's still plenty of water in there. Now it's just like kind of dripping. Okay, so we're at two minutes. Now we do another circle. It's a little bit. A little bit more difficult for me to see it like you know what's going on like this from this angle but you know i think i can make it happen okay <laughs> look at how it's going okay two and a half let's just do our last 50 grams take it up to 300 go right in the center Okay, we're at 303 and a half. I can turn off the kettle. I'm gonna give it one last little swirl, flatten it out, and let's see what we get. We're at three minutes. Who knows, that might take a minute to drain through. Oh man, what a soothing process making coffee it is. We just hang out. <laughs> I can't believe what happened with that coffee. <laughs> in the mess it made. You know, I think even if I would have had the niche cup in there, which is a lot taller, I still would have gotten a mess with that coffee. Maybe the spout and, and the niche cup, maybe that combination could have worked because it's, it's a lot taller. We're almost done. Let me show you guys.
it's just there's still a lot of liquid in there. So you could see there's still a lot of liquid in there. And, but you know, that's, that's the thing with the steadfast, you know, you can grind cores, you can still get a slow uh, drawdown and it just gives you that, you know, it'll, it'll cut some of the acidity, give you like a sweeter tasting cup. You can achieve kind of the same thing by grinding a lot finer and using a faster brewer like an, an origami or a V60. But there is something about whether you grind fine or coarse that makes a small difference. Uh, you know, that might mean something to you or not, but it, you know, to me, I can enjoy it either way, but, but there is a difference. We're completely done. It finished uh, right around four and a half minutes. So that's exactly what I was looking for. So this is perfect, 50 on the niche with some agitation and the steadfast, you know, that's gonna work just fine. So, okay, so I started to tell you guys, but I didn't wanna miss my draw, final draw down there. But you could see like where the spout goes to. By the way, this is made by Crema Products. And, um, and yeah, and you could see the distance still, right? From here, there, there's a lot of coffee could still fly out but at least the back of it, most of the mess, the first time I used it, okay, the only mess that I got was like in the back of the niche, it kind of dirtied everything back there. This will obviously stop that from happening because it goes into the cup like this. But if you use the, the one that comes with the niche, let's see. So, but you see, I never thought this coffee was gonna be so messy. But now you could see, you know, there's still a little gap here. I bet you some flakes still would have flown out. I mean, that was crazy what happened. <laughs> it was insane what happened. Okay, so anyway, just wanted to show you guys that little detail. While this video is going to be some weird thing, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. All right, we're done with that. Let's, let me serve and get everything ready, and I'll see you guys at the other side, at the other counter. All right, so here we have it. I already served it and I forgot to take a picture of what the bed of coffee looked like. I always like showing you guys, but it was nice. You know, it was flat and <laughs> it wasn't muddy. Uh, it looked fine. All right, aroma. Well, it's, <laughs> I'm back to like regular normal coffee. You know, I've been having just a black and white recently, <laughs> experimenting with that. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> We'll talk, we'll, I keep wanting to go back to that, but we'll, we'll get around to that. We'll get, we'll get to that in a second. All right, let's taste it. Let's see what this Good Brothers has for us. Wow, it's very tasty. Mm, another one that's, uh, you know, giving me more than I was expecting. Man, and that was my first taste. Okay, let, let's see, let's see. You know, I do detect some distinct flavors. I detect some stuff here that I, there's something here that I don't think I've had before. You know, by the way, the focusing thing, I still haven't figured that out. It would be ideal to do manual focus, but I don't see how I can do manual focus on myself. And I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out one of these days. But for now, I'm sorry about the lens breathing every now and then. You know, there are some newer lenses from Canon that uh, that they supposedly they take away the um, a focus breathing and it doesn't happen. But yeah, I don't have that, so. Yeah, there's something here different that I don't think I've had before. Okay, so right off the bat, citrus, I don't think so. Acidity is very pleasant, very pleasant. It's a... Uh, well, how do I describe the acidity? Because it's, wow, it's just nice. <laughs> I, don't know what, I don't know what to tell you. It's a nice, really nice acidity. And it's, it's low. It's not, it's there, but it's not a lot. It's not a lot. 
but it's just very pleasant, very nice. As far as flavors, like a little like a spice or like a little touch of cinnamon or something like that. It's sweet. Yeah, not a lot of acidity, but it has. It has acidity, not a lot. Sweet. Easy to drink. I have to do more experimentation. Uh, there's nothing here that completely blows me away, but there's something different about it, like a spiciness to it, or um, I don't know. It's hard to describe. <laughs> hard to describe. We'll see what the tasting notes are. But you know, lately I've just been having the funky coffee, and uh, <laughs> this is so different, man. This is just you know, again, uh, <laughs> this is like real coffee. This, I, we'll get, <laughs> I keep going back to it. We'll get back to that in a second, but, all right, so as tasting notes, I don't know. There's like a spiciness to it or like a, a cinnamon kind of stuff going on. Definitely more fruity than citrus. I'm not getting citrus because the acidity is very low. Level of sweetness is nice. Again, it's just, this is just a very easy to have coffee. I would say it's more fruity than citrus, but definitely like some fruity notes, like fruitier notes. All right, let's see. <laughs> let's see what we got. All right. Oh boy. All right, so Sumatra, <laughs> I'll put it here. I'll put it here on the screen. All right, so organic wet halt. Organic is uh, usually the type of, the way that they treat the farm or the way they grow the, the coffee, wet halt. I'm not exactly sure what process that is to clean it, but it, I, I'm sure it has something to do probably with the, the way they're cleaning the coffee. All right, here we go. The tasting notes. Sour gum syrup. Wow. I don't know what, I've seen that like a, you know, I'm not even gonna guess. I'm not even gonna guess. I don't know what that is, I'll Google it later. <laughs> I mean, I know what syrup is, but sour gum. I've seen this, for sure I've seen this word a bunch of times, but I can't right now either. I don't remember or I, I never read what it is. I don't know, but it's, it's, the word is familiar to me. I don't know what it is. I'll Google it. Maybe I'll put it here on the on the screen. <laughs> okay, brown sugar. You know, usually I detect that sugar sugar note. I usually detect that sugar note, and yes, it's sweet, but I wouldn't I wouldn't put it with the you know those ones that you could kind of get that sugar kind of yeah I see it you know. And this one, why not? It's sweet, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't have said that. And then we got rustic sweetness. Wow, I don't see anything about spiciness or cinnamon or rustic sweetness. I don't know what they mean by rustic sweetness. Wow, you know, the descriptors, the tasting notes on this coffee, other than brown sugar, nothing helps me at all. So, <laughs> I don't know about you guys, what you guys got from that, but one thing is for sure. It's very coffee-like and I'm back to like normal kind of reality. And it's very good, I love it. Very easy to drink, sweetness, not too much acidity, but still rounded. It's got both ends of the, of the story here. And very nice. Let me serve myself another cup and then I already told you what I wanted to say about the Congo Kibu. Maybe the next, the next video we'll, we'll pull shots of espresso 
And who, who knows, maybe I even bring out the infuser and we pull shots on both and see what happens with, with the Congo Kiwi, which from what I recall, is like one of the tastiest, if not the tastiest espresso that I've ever made, at least from, you know, all the coffees that I've made espresso with so far here. Um, but yeah, and then we're going to talk about this one. So let me serve myself again and then I'll give you <laughs> my final thoughts on this. Okay, let's swirl it. All right, we got the rest in here. Yeah, the aroma is nice, you know. It's not, not a lot, but it's, it's, you know, nice aroma. Well, this stuff is just so, I keep going back to it. This stuff is so funky. This is incredible. Like, okay, do, <laughs> let's, let's just talk about it. Let's, let's finally get around to talking about this thing. All right. Would I put this like in my best coffees of the year? No, no, this is hardly not even coffee. Like, <laughs> by me saying that, I don't want you guys uh, by any means to think that I didn't like it, that I didn't enjoy it, that I didn't have fun with it, that I'm, you know, so glad that something like this exists, that that they actually made this. Like, I don't want you to think any of those things because I, I, I really liked it in in a lot of ways. In and in a, I knew that I was gonna get all like, kind of like, I've been thinking like, how do I describe this to the guys? How do I? <laughs> it's, you just have to get some. You gotta get some of this co-fermented. Doesn't have to be this lychee one, you know, but why not? This lychee one is good. I mean, first of all, you're gonna have to get over the, the whole thing about uh, the, the funky smell. It just doesn't smell good, okay? In the bag or when you grind it. And one of the nice things about coffee is when you first crack that bag open and the smell you get and then you grind it, this will give you the opposite of that. Okay, So in that sense, yeah, I don't, <laughs> it's just mixed feelings about this thing. Uh, okay, so that's that, you know, it just says, I don't want to use the word, but it stinks, okay? This <laughs> does not smell good at all. Uh, now, once you brew it, completely changes. The smell is pleasant, is uh, very fruity, and you know, maybe I should read you guys my notes. Yeah, let me let me get my phone, hold, hold, hold on. <laughs> you know, as I was, um, as I was like dialing in this coffee and playing with it and brewing it, I kept, and I always keep some notes, but on this one, I think I, think I kept a lot of notes. <laughs> There's a lot of things happening in my mind. Okay, so let, <laughs> let me read you just all, all of my notes on it. Okay, so the black and white coffee. So I started on six on the K plus uh, on the April and I had a three and a half minute brew time. The April is very fast, okay? And I don't think it's just in particular to the April. I think a lot of the flat bottom brewers are gonna be very fast, faster than a cone brewer. So, but yeah, the, the April is the only, you know, I, and I'm still gonna record that video like comparing the April and the origami. I'm really interested on in that. So we'll get around to it. But yeah, keep, I ground at six, which is kind of finer than I normally go on the K plus. I usually start at seven for the brewers, but on the April, I'm starting at six just because it's so much faster. Even at six, I got a three and a half minute brew time. So what did it give me? Okay, uh, medium to high acidity. So yeah, this coffee, I would put as far as the tasting profile of the coffee, I would put it the same like the Indonesian coffee that I had that I said was a smack on the face. This is way back in the videos. But I still remember because <laughs> I'm still I still feel the smack. The, <laughs> that coffee was like intense, harsh, like hard, <laughs> you know, a lot for most people. Very high acidity and very citrus forward. The same like the, I think it was a Colombian Finca Las something. I'll try to look it up and give you guys a picture of the bag here or something. But yeah, I've had those two coffees are very similar in their taste profile. Very strong, very smack in the face, very citrus forward, very hard to get any kind of sweetness out of them. 
Uh, you're gonna have to brew them like really long. So usually on the triplet, I have my best results for those coffees if I got it right. And that's the problem with the triplet. <laughs> you know, a lot of the times it's like, oh, not too, not too good. But every now and then you get it right and then it's spectacular. This, same thing. You're gonna have to brew it kind of long to get some sweetness or more sweetness out. This is sweeter than both of those but with the same intense acidity. This is a lot fruitier. Those are a lot more citrus forward, but there's just something that is very similar to those. You know, I, I wish if I had those bags, I would like to, and you know, for recording this video, I kind of wanted to do that, but then I have to like look for them. I keep all my bags. <laughs> Maybe we'll talk about that another time. This video is going to get super long. So, but yeah, I could have looked up those bags, pulled them out, read them and, see what it is that, about these coffees that I think are very similar. There's something about them, those three, this one and the other two, that is just, I would put them in the same little bracket, okay? But now this being this funky process, it'd be on its own kind of thing. So yeah, this is a coffee's a smack on the face. It's very, <laughs> it's a, but a lot fruitier, it's a lot friendlier than the other two. The other two are very citrus, very like aggressive, like, acidity the acidity here a little bit easier to deal with and it's a lot sweeter so in that sense okay but there's something about these three coffees that is a smack in the face all right let's keep going so medium to high acidity citrus note okay so you know i, I forgot but I'm, i got the citrus note, a big citrus note but if i wrote it down it's because it was very present so when you brew it fast you'll get the citrus note uh, but again, like the Indian River grapefruit, which is that red one, which is the one I've had, a grapefruit that I've had before that's red inside and it's a lot sweeter than your average grapefruit. The acidity level is not as harsh. Uh, it says strawberry in the aroma. So in the aroma, I was getting the strawberry. Still whiny, still like that sangria going on. Uh, so whiny as it cools with more sweetness. So as it cools, I got more sweetness. Um, very funky and definitely not for everyone. So you see, <laughs> I put it in my notes. I'm warning you. As espresso, it was definitely more tropical. So when we tried the espresso, I kept saying a lot of tropical fruit, a lot of like, uh, uh, how do you call that? Like a sangria, but even more fruity, like a fruit punch, uh, half sangria, half fruit punch. <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, more tropical and more fruity as espresso and more like sangria, I wrote, I put it on here. Okay, so very intense with the same level of acidity and sweetness, but without the citrus note. So that's talking about espresso. That is the, the only difference is that you don't get that, you don't get that citrus note and obviously it's a lot more intense, like all the flavors. Now on the Steadfast, on the Steadfast, I got the nicest cup from this coffee. It was the, my best result. On the Steadfast, uh, I ground at 75, so way coarser than on the April. So 75, and it's still brewing for five minutes and 15 seconds. So way slower, even though I ground way coarser, there you see like the huge difference between the Steadfast and the April and what you could do with each. So, all right. Now on the step fast, I got better. It was just better all around, sweeter, less acidity, still tropical with notes of sangria, strawberries, and a squeeze of lemon on top. So I had that little like squeeze of lemon that I sometimes describe when I get, you, you just have to, you just have to know, I guess. I, it's, I don't know how I'm gonna describe that. Okay, so better acidity on the step fast, and more balanced. That's what, those are all my notes on it. Again, the, how do you call it? The tasting notes, lychee, peach, strawberry, kiwi, Sauvignon Blanc, which is like whiny, fruity. I kept going to sangria. That's what it tastes like to me. Uh, it does have that whininess. It does have that fruitiness, very intense, high acidity, or at least medium. Yeah, smack in the face but in a gentler way, in some sense. Once you get over that smell <laughs> before before you brew it, okay, it is a lot easier to deal with and gentler kind of 
flavor profile than the other two coffee coffees I would put it I would put this in into that bracket did I explain that <laughs> okay I'm doing my best let me go ahead and finish this cup this video has been <laughs> has been a mess uh, anyway but I hope you guys enjoyed your time here with me today uh, please give the video a like uh, you know next <laughs> well Today, is, I've been all over the place, but hopefully you guys got a little laugh here and there. Give the video a like. Uh, please subscribe to the channel, help us out. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to the channel, help us out, reach the thousands so we could do some lives. Imagine if I'm all over the place with these edited videos. Imagine what's gonna happen with the lives. So, I can't wait. I'm glad I was able to keep you company here for a while. I have a feeling, although we only did a pour over, this video is gonna be quite lengthy, so. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all next week.